In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God whose proper name is Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all holy praise is due. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God whose proper name is Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all holy praise is um, I need to know if there's, if, uh, what, what people can see in the chat, um, in, or in the chat, if you could just let me know, dear family, if you can hear me properly, because again, uh, for some reason, I've got this echo. One, two, one, two, microphone testing, one, two. Okay, that has an echo back. Um, let me know if you can hear me, dear family, uh, where you are, and then I shall begin again. Let me know if you can hear what I'm saying. Yes, bro, says brother DJ, Mr. P. Sorry? Can you still hear me, dear family? Give me an indication once again, if you can still hear um, what I'm saying. My microphone is, yes, can still hear you, and it doesn't appear to be echoing back. I'm hoping that's the case. So once again, let me begin. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God whose proper name is Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all holy praises are due forever. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the greeting words of peace, we say it in the ancient tongue of Arabic, as-salam alaykum. Welcome, 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 greetings, shalom, shalom, ja, Rastafari, welcome, dear beloved brothers and sisters, family, friends, even welcome to the enemies, to the haters. Welcome to everyone who, once again, you have found your way to another episode of the Image and Nation show. My name is Brother Leo Muhammad, and we bring to you the Image and Nation show each and every week on a Thursday starting at 6.30 p.m. And I'm always very, very happy, feeling very pleased and blessed to have sitting alongside me. You can't see her, but she's here with me, my beloved companion, friend, wife. You know, I can't give enough descriptions to describe how important she is in my life, but she's here with me. And so I'm gonna give her an opportunity to give you all the greetings over to my beloved sister. Assalamu alaikum family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saviour's Day. I'm still in that Saviour's Day. Absolutely. Mode. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sister Claudia Muhammad. Um, I want to know your feedback. Did you all manage to watch the Honourable Minister? Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. 
dear family. That that's was a weekend. Yeah, that's a question. Okay. And you know, be honest. If you didn't, you didn't. But you know, if you did, let us know in the chat, dear family. Let us know if you were able to tune in to any, if not all, that's of the right. wonderful, powerful Saviour's Day weekend that we've just come out of because it was indeed absolutely powerful magnificent and there was so much food so much food we wasn't there well beloved fed. yeah we so much well food fed. that that we will be able to feed on for you days and, <laughs> and, and weeks and months and years that's right. going forward that's right so let us know in the chat you know if you if you were able to tune into savior's day and uh, that powerful message from the honorable minister lewis farrakhan which yeah. they can re-watch on noi.org so anyway. as sister says noi.org that's right go on there and you'll be able to re-watch the the keynote address. Re watch or watch <laughs> yes if you if you wasn't able to watch it in the first place and um how many of you were able to see the magnificent youth summit from savior's day uh, um, somebody says I was unable to, so we'll watch online. That's DJ Mr. P. Yeah, try and tune in, brother, because, you know, I cannot emphasize it enough just how vital the messages that come from the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan are. I cannot emphasize enough the example of the nation hmm. of Islam, because you see, the nation of Islam is a microcosm of a macrocosm that must become a reality for us as a people. And I know that many of our people, we get a little bit kind of, you know, caught up in, in this world's thinking and this world's uh, explanation of things. And so when we hear Islam, nation of Islam, many of us are immediately turned off because we because Islam has been poisoned. But remember, Islam just means peace. So substitute the word Islam then for a nation of peace. Understand what it is that all of us crave today as human beings. Go ahead, sister. No, I was going to say, and that's what the weekend was like. It was oh, just man. so peaceful because we were engaging in 24-7 nation and it was great. It was an oasis mm. of peace. You know, it was a beautiful, beautiful thing to see black people coming together right. through Young, all the ages. Old, that's right. You know, and, and isn't that what we want? Isn't it? Don't we want to see a nation of our people, a nation without borders, by the way, a global nation, you know, of our people demonstrating our magnificence, having a good grasp on our history doing things in the contemporary reality mm -hmm. and projecting ourselves into a glorious and wonderful future. Isn't that what each of us wants? That's right. And it, it was um, it's so beautiful to see young people talking about God. It was wonderful. Wonderful, beloved. Absolutely wonderful. And also the drill. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did any <laughs> of you manage to? How many of you managed to catch the drill, man? You know, this is this is the um, this is the speciality of the members of the Nation of Islam. It's called drill, and it's called the exercise of the gods. Hmm. And um, it's been three years yeah. since there's been a, a physical Saviour's Day, and the last one was in 2020. Yeah, 2020, we're now 2023. So, you know, with this whole COVID stuff that went down, um, this is really the first time back in a proper physical Saviour's Day. And I'm telling you, man, those young brothers and sisters, wow, wow they've taken the drill onto a whole different level. Absolutely. Amazing. So, so In fast. Inspiring. Yes, very, very inspiring. Fast. Inspiring. And again, as I said, it's a microcosm of a macrocosm, of a greater reality that each and every one of us has a role to play in bringing into, into reality, dear family, you know? And so I hope you are able to uh, tune in. 
Um, I don't know how many of you, again, were able to tune into the tremendous discussion around the wheel oh, yeah. and the discussion around the reality of God mm. coming in person, the reality of the belief mm -hmm. that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad lives. Mm. You know, these are things, uh, brothers and sisters, that as a people, we should be striving to come to terms with, because if we truly understand the magnitude of what all of those things mean, whether we're talking about the wheel, whether we're talking about the fact that Elijah Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad lives, whether we're talking about the reality of having a nation that we can call our own, where we become an independent sovereign people all over again, not subject to other people's dictates, in particular people who hate our guts, mm. people who can't stand our shadow. You know, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a shame, and it, and it would be a shame if we continue to go down a road where we don't understand our own self-interest in having such a nation, having such magnificent teachings that can be proved at no limit of time. Having a teaching that is an invincible word, a word that has been in existence now since 1930 on the coming of Master Farad Muhammad, whose birthday it was on the 26th of February, because he was born on the 26th of February, 1877, which makes him today 146 hmm. years old, dear family, and he lives. Hmm. I just want us to think today, you know, and, and if we would just embrace our own truth, <laughs> embrace our own liberation, because we, we all love to talk about the liberation of the black man and the woman, but, you know, oftentimes it's in a very fanciful way. We don't necessarily know the mechanisms and the processes by which this liberation is going to happen in the nation of Islam. We're telling you that it's been revealed to us through the coming of God and through his servants, through his messenger, through his Mahdi, through his Messiah, through his Christ, that this is all unfolding as we speak. Dear brothers and sisters, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you know, I, I felt like he, he barely touched the subject of the war of Armageddon as begun, barely touched it in the manner in which maybe many of us would have expected. But in truth, he showed how the war of Armageddon is so personal to each and every one of us and how we have to do that introspection, that looking within and, and really sort out the issues that are troubling us, sort out our relationship with so-called Jews, sort out, you know, what we are doing and what we are saying as a people toward our own liberation, not to mention or to waste too much time even to being too focused on what's happening in, U in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine and America and Britain and the European Union and all of that conflict, which is a part of the con conflagration that is now unfolding, that is a part of the war of Armageddon. Yes, because it was like um, the minister was teaching about ourselves and telling the truth. <laughs> The, the main us. yes the main thing was about truth you must tell the truth come on truthful and dealing with yourself dealing with your relationship with god that's right you know because once you you look at yourself then you know how to treat others <laughs> you know how to handle things you look at how um you know rising above the emotion into the thinking of god Absolutely. and to acquire god's mind and Absolutely. that's what he was last few the minister's last few words were talking about let this mind let this mind, mind be in you. you the same mind which is in christ jesus that's right you know how do you do that yeah see unless obedience yeah man <laughs> unless you're studying 
uh, and having a, a grasp of the knowledge of self. That's right. You know, then it's going to be very difficult if we if we're on a surface level looking at these things and we're not, you know, it's like trying to teach history to a child, but the child can't see themselves in the history. Well, they're never, ever going to be able to identify with it. That's right. you, you have to make a relationship between the history and the student who you're trying to teach that mm -hmm. to. And it's the same principle here. Each and every one of us has to develop our own personal relationship right. with Rabil Alameen, as we say, uh, coming from the scriptures in the nation of Islam, our own personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because God and man are not separate entities. Not, not. You see, it's not, this is not some religious dogma where, you know, God is in the sky somewhere, mm -hmm. untouchable, unreachable, no relationship. We've got to get a good knowledge of, our, knowledge of ourselves that will show us the true relationship that we have as individuals. And of course, as a collective with the almighty creator and his manifestation today mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sis. No, I was going to say, you know, like we all have God in self and Satan in self. Yeah. It's in self. And like when your mind tells you, don't steal that mm. money. Mm. That's God telling you. Come on. Then Satan pops up and says, it's all right. Go ahead. No, you all know. Yeah. Just take it. It's fine. Yeah, nobody's looking. Yeah, nobody's looking. And but guess what? Somebody's always looking. Somebody's always if you're looking, <laughs> if you're if just the fact that you're you're able to see what mm -hmm. you're doing, that's it. It's that's done. Right. It's a done deal. You're in trouble. That's right. And the more we listen to that voice inside, that corrects us, that warns us, reproves us. Reproves us. That's when we'll be, you know, we, you each day when whenever you hear that voice that's telling you do this do that it's the first voice that you hear that's the god voice absolutely and then that little satan sneaks in and says no don't do it don't do don't, it don't listen <laughs> yeah don't listen no no or do it yeah that's, do it yeah yeah, yeah don't yeah do it do nobody it. nobody's gonna know no yeah, nobody's, nobody's gonna and know. you have that battle within yourself absolutely there's nobody on the outside doing it it's inside of yourself absolutely. that you are battling and that is what we're taught in the nation of islam to itself you know, we really have to battle with self what's the course called self-improvement the basis for community development just think about it man that's what that's what it's self all about improvement. that's what it's all about and um you know we could we could literally spend uh the rest of this show just talking about savior's day because mm. it was that important and as sister claudia rightly says we're still in the savior's day mode yeah but our subject uh this evening uh dear family is in fact uh, and by the way welcome to episode 70 mm. okay this is show 70 of the imagination show and our title this evening is the planned war okay before you speak um our master student said that the volume is very low is it okay, very let, low me, let me let me let me see if i can bring it up a bit is uh, the planned war okay before um i'm not sure that i can do much about that can you hear properly, volume there, family? Can you hear? Can hear you both fine. Okay, Mr. can Peter. hear both fine. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, well, you know, dear family, we're still having a few issues with sound, um, but <laughs> every week there's something. But uh, we're getting there. Samson um, SM A five three six B has raised the hand. Uh, we're not going to. Um, I mean, just put, a put, put a question in or, or put a comment in, uh, please, dear family. So, as I said, we're looking at this uh, planned war because, you know, brothers and sisters, I'm going to take my time on some of these things, some of these subject matters, because I, I don't know if we understand, if we really appreciate. Okay, Celestine says, Thank I can you. hear you. Thank you very much. 
uh, for that uh, sister Celestine. But it's really, really um, important, in my humble opinion, that uh, we understand this enemy. You know, the minister really spent a great deal of time uh, in his keynote address, really trying to expound on the fact, the knowledge of the enemy and how this enemy operates and, and how we can avoid the pitfalls and the wiles of Satan if we educate ourselves, if we immerse ourselves in the truth, in the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of God, uh, because that's the battle. That's the battle that's raging today. That's the war of Armageddon that's currently taking place. And the sad reality is that I believe that not enough of us, you know, really appreciate um, this warfare that is constantly raging internally, but all around us. And because we literally are like non-combatants in the war. We become victims and victimized by the war. We become casualties of war. Some of us never ever even appreciating or realizing that we were in the war or at war. But as a people, based on what has happened to us historically, and what continues to this very day, which is why, for instance, you have us being a people who are constantly still, I believe, singing, we shall overcome, mm -hmm. constantly still uh, begging or demanding to have equal rights, equal justice under the law, constantly desirous of being treated like everybody else. So somebody has to come up with a movement that says Black Lives Matter. Why did they have to say that? Because it became very evident that from the perspective of the powers that be who run the institutions like the police and the court system and the prisons and the mental institutions and the, even our employers and educators or whatever, it was clear that Black Lives don't matter. And so somebody has to come up with such a slogan <laughs> to try to re-educate people. And then, of course, a big argument breaks out because then people say, well, all lives matter. Well, we already knew that everybody else's lives matter. But the question was, does our life matter? And like I said, dear family, it was very evident um, by what we've experienced over a long protracted period of time that you know really and truly our lives have not mattered. And so uh, dear family, what I propose to do um, this evening is to really, I'm gonna go through a bit of a, a, a documentary. I'm praying that it works properly, that we don't have sound issues. Um, that really kind of documents a particular part of this history with an enemy that I don't think many of us really understand and appreciate why we have to unify in mind, heart, spirit, and physically in order to combat, in order to overcome, in order to win this war that is oppressing all of us. And so I wanted you to, if you can, uh, again, I'm praying that this works, really listen carefully, watch carefully. I'm gonna stop from time to time. And we will interject and we'll talk about what we're witnessing on this, but um, let's see first and foremost, if this actually is going to work.
and uh, and our ability to control the battle space and seize the high ground is devastating. All countries respect the power of the United States and they respect uh, how dominant we are in this region. And we get so I'm just going to start and uh, and our ability to control the battle space and seize the high ground is devastating. All countries respect the power country, of the United that, States uh, and come up against us. Uh, how dominant uh, we are in this the region. synergy and with air, land, and sea forces, and, uh, and, uh, and our, our ability to control, control the battle space and seize the high ground, ground is, is devastating. devastating. All countries respect the power of the United that, uh, States and come up against us. Uh, how dominant uh, we are in this region. synergy and with air, land, and sea forces, and, uh, and, uh, and our ability to control the battle space and seize the high ground. Is devastating. devastating. All countries respect the power of the United States, States and come up against us. Uh, how dominant uh, we are in this region. synergy and with their better and sea forces and, uh, and, uh, and our ability to control the battle space, space and seize the high ground. ground. Is devastating. devastating. All countries respect the power of the United States, States and come up against us. How dominant uh, we are in this region. region. We got a real problem. Got a real problem trying to control this. Um, this sound, which is a real shame. I don't know why. I really don't know why, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, really don't know why this is like this why i'm getting this um this feedback let me try um, something here Family, let me try again. Regions. We report from the South China Sea where the Chinese are warning off. Reclaiming land Regions. in the South China we Sea. The fact the that we're China dealing sea, with a situation the right now where we, the U.S., has to be much more aggressive in dealing with the Chinese government. CNN has learned that the U.S. Navy is about to send a destroyer there. Let's go to our CNN. reclaiming land. CNN. Where we, the U.S., the have to be China much more aggressive in dealing with the Chinese news. government. CNN has the warned the U.S. Navy is about to send a destroyer there. Let's the go to our CNN. China's it's alarming creation of entire Where we, the U.S., the have to be China much more aggressive in dealing with the Chinese government. CNN has warned the U.S. Navy is about to send a destroyer there. Let's go to our CNN. Yeah, I've stopped that altogether, and um, 
I'm going to see if when I try to get it back up again if it if it will work properly. I just need to double check. Um, yeah, I've stopped that altogether. Yeah. And um, I'm going to see if when I... That is strange. The reality of technology. Yeah, but it's... Um, I don't understand. I don't understand why having this problem. Yeah, but it's... Um, I don't... Okay, what you just turned down, move it down and... One, two, no. one, two, microphone no, testing, okay, one, two. One, two, one, two, microphone testing. I think I see what's going on. One, two, one, two, microphone testing. Can anybody hear now? Ugh. Claudia, can you say something? Um, yes, they can hear you. Yeah? Okay, and that's with the volume completely down. Right. Then you just put your mic on mute and then play. I pity a country that uh, would come up against us. Um, the synergy with air, land, and sea forces and, uh, and our ability to control the battle space and seize the high ground is devastating. I pity a country that uh, would come up against us. Um, the synergy with air, land, and sea forces and, uh, and our ability to control the battle space and seize the high ground is devastating. All countries respect the power of the United States and they respect uh, how dominant we are in this region. And we get better and better and better. All right. Did can did people hear that? Yes, can, can, can you hear me? Yes, they said they can. Can you hear me Mr. now? Paulette, Brother Dean, DJ Mr. P. Okay. So the the first thing that I wanted to say was I don't know if you picked up on the the level of arrogance of this General Franklin Blaisdell, whatever his name is, but but I I just want you to appreciate, dear family. The thinking, this uh, Cronus complex uh, that uh, Brother David reminded me the other day was I was I was talking about the Cronus syndrome mm -hmm. and Cronus diff different. I, I I didn't come up with the right term, but it was the Cronus complex uh, based on the correction that Brother David uh, offered to myself that the Honourable Minister Lewis Farrakhan talked about. But this arrogance is something that you must understand about these people and how they feel about themselves being like a dominant force on the planet and how the scripture asked the question who can make war with the beast you got to understand that you got people who now they are so bestial in their war machine that no one and, and from their perspective, no one can make war with them. No one can defeat them because they're so powerful. This is the, the big-chested kind of arrogance that one hears when one 
takes time to actually listen to them and look at their attitude. You, yourself, yeah. that's the man. Okay, so we're going to continue, uh, dear. Tonight at 10, a rare glimpse of China's ambitious expansion in one of the world's most contested regions. We report from the South China Sea, where the Chinese are warning off anyone who comes too close to their building program. We continue our look this morning at what China does not want you to see. The United States says the superpower is reclaiming land in the South China Sea. The fact that we're dealing with a situation right now where we, the U.S., has to be much more aggressive in dealing with the Chinese government. CNN has learned that the U.S. Navy is about to send a destroyer there. Let's go to our CNN chief. CNN got exclusive access to classified U.S. surveillance flight. <laughs> now remember... This is in the South China Sea, okay? Chinese reclaiming, they claim, land that belongs to them. They're, the Chinese are actually creating, similar to what the uh, people in Dubai have done by creating uh, artificial islands within uh, Dubai, that area where they've now built, built up this great city, you know, with these uh, five star hotels and beyond whatever the chinese have decided that they want to build infrastructure in the south china sea south china sea uh, <laughs> i'm emphasizing but the americans have got a problem with the chinese building infrastructure in the south china sea it's over the islands the threat of China is becoming big news. The media is beating the drums of war as the world is being primed to regard China as a new enemy. China's alarming creation of entirely new territory in the South China Sea is one part of a broader military push that some fear is to challenge U.S. dominance in the region. China is building airstrips in the South China Sea on disputed islands condemned by an international tribunal. This is now a flashpoint for war between China and America. What is not news is that China itself is under threat. These American bases form a giant noose encircling China with missiles, bombers, warships, all the way from Australia through the Pacific to Asia and beyond. Dear family, are, are you listening? Because because if we don't get to grips with why the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the white man is the devil, mm -hmm. then then you will forever recoil at that suggestion by thinking, oh, you know, that's a bit harsh. Why do you have to? What? Why? Why is it that you can see all of these bases? all over our planet, in other people's territories, in other people's countries, but you and me are somehow supposed to see this as normal. Mm -hmm. Normal behavior, normal activity, normal for who? They're suggesting that China is now going to challenge the United States' dominance. How did they come to dominate? Why shouldn't other people be able to have hegemony in their own regions of the planet. I just want you to understand this. Because if we don't understand this and we keep feeding on the Western narrative, you know, then China becomes the aggressor. China is this terrible troublemaker who is now forcing poor little America or poor little Britain or poor the West poor Europe to, to try to counter China but what's China doing other than literally trying to survive surrounded uh, John Pilger who's the documentary maker this documentary that we're making that we're watching he describes 
these bases as being like a noose going around China. Do you understand that in Ukraine it's the same thing that they were trying to do by bringing NATO all the way into Ukraine right up to the Russian border and that NATO has been expanding since the end of the Cold War where they promised that they would not move one inch east, in other words, towards Russia. But since that time, I think they've incorporated more than 14 different countries, NATO pushing all the time up towards the Russian border, the Russian Federation border, and that Putin has been warning them for years, saying, don't keep doing this. This is a red line. They feel, the Russians feel, that they are under an existential threat. Existential meaning that they feel that they are literally going to have to be fighting for their very survival. Don't, 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 don't you understand that the Russians, that the Chinese have seen what happened to Iraq, have seen what's happened to Syria, have seen what's happened to Libya, have seen what has happened to Vietnam, have seen all of these wars that have been perpetrated by the West. Don't you think that nations that are strong and have their own military, have their own nuclear, that they will say, well, hold on a minute. Are we going to just sit back and let the West ultimately do what they've done to other people? Or are we going to defend ourselves? We're, we're talking about the planned war. According to John Pilger, not only is nuclear war in the future thinkable but it's actually planned i just want us to uh, I, I don't know how much of this i'm going to be able to get through this evening but let me know in the chat if you're bored if it's a you know some rubbish subject that you don't think is really uh something that matters to us as a people or something that we should educate ourselves about you know I'm suggesting, dear family, that we need to be wide awake to what's going on on our planet because most of us don't know. Most of us don't know why the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad had to say what he said and why God has come and why we are now in the fours of the war of Armageddon. Feel free to come in, Sister Claudia, if you've got... A contribution to make before we go to the next segment. I mean, if you were in Beijing looking out, you stood on the tallest building in Beijing and looked out at the Pacific Ocean, you'd see American warships. You'd see Guam is about to sink because there's so many missiles pointed at China. You'd look up at Korea and see American armaments pointing at China. You'd see Japan, which is basically, uh, uh, Japan's a glove over the American fist. Do you understand this, dear family? Do you understand that since the Second World War that Japan has been like a vassal of America and that America uses Japan to threaten China and that all of these islands Guam and these other places in that region in the east all of them are being buttressed and used by America to basically threaten China because China as a nation is growing in strength and technology and where they say, I think, 75 years ago, it was regarded as a nothing country in terms of its GDP, in terms of its wealth, in terms of its uh, poverty levels for its people, and so on and so forth. China is now looking to become maybe the greatest economy on the planet. And why shouldn't they, if they've done this through normal means of taking care of their business and their people and whatever why should uh, another nation becoming strong and prosperous be a threat to another nation why i just want you to think about the mentality whereby one must be totally dominant and nobody else must rise just think about that 
mentality. Go ahead, no, sister. No, but then I was actually thinking of when you see the Chinese in the Caribbean and Africa, how they are with us. Okay, and I, and I get that and I hear that. But, you know, before the Chinese came, who was there in the Caribbean and in Africa? And has the, have the Chinese taken us into 400 years of enslavement? I'm asking the question. You know, because because it, that's what I'm saying. If we if we think that the Chinese are operating on the same level that this enemy did to us, and now we're gonna let this enemy turn us against the Chinese, rather than understanding how he uses people like like I said, Japan is now an enemy of China being used by America. I, I'm just asking us to think. I'm asking us to think. And, and, I, and I want you to uh, put in the chat, um, you know, what your view is about this issue. Because it's a serious, serious issue. Because, you know, all of our narratives we get from an enemy. And, and that's what we know about the Chinese. I'm not saying that just recently... Um, um, Paul Kagame, I think it is, in one of the African countries, mm -hmm. just threw out, yeah. expelled some Chinese, Chinese yeah. because they were taking liberties with black people mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm clapping. I'm saying go, go, yeah. go ahead, and that's how we've got to be. Yeah. Whether it's Chinese, regardless of who, right? But like people have to treat. Right, but 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 just because you've got some Chinese business people who are trying to exploit some black people in Africa, you can't equate that to 400 years of enslavement of Africans by Caucasians. But you can't equate it, but is it right? No, we're not. Just, no. You see, this, what, this is the point. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can, you can condemn all wrongs, mm -hmm. but you don't make the mistake now of putting the Chinese on the same level mm -hmm. as the Europeans. How? How, how would we get there? Mm -hmm. So then this is exactly what the Europeans want us to do. So that now we don't even, we, we don't even know how to discern levels of evil mm -hmm. and evil doing against us as a people. So now we, we, they want us to be fighting everybody and everything mm -hmm. when not everybody and everything is behaving like these people have behaved. And, and that's what Saviour's Day, the minister says. It's truth. <laughs> Truth and our righteousness, what will get us through? This is it, beloved. But I'm saying, what is the truth? And this is what I want us to get to the bottom of when we look at this documentary. And by the way, John Pilger, I, I, I can't say that I agree with everything that John Pilger says, but I know one thing about John Pilger. He is a world famous investigative reporter who does not mess about when it comes to Australia and that region mm -hmm. and the history of that uh, region and the East when it comes to his reporting. And so, you know, dear family, please follow this. Follow this. Let me know if you are with us on this uh, because it's very, very read interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so we've got um, Noah. He said, um, Napoleon said that China is a sleeping giant. Don't wake him up. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. It's, um, hold on. Let me just go back. Um, the Chinese are driving out the Europeans and, America, and the Americans. Um, our sister Paulette said, I hate them Chinese in Jamaica. They treat our people like shh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, S-H-I-T. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Rwanda fling out 18 Chinese this week from DJ Mr. P and their businesses. That's why Idi Amin run them out of Africa. The Asians, mm -hmm. Indians, East yes. Indians. Yes. So these are the general... It's not just Jamaica, hun. They they are all over the West Indies and Africa. They are like ants, be everywhere. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Well, I appreciate those comments, dear family. And again, you know, for me, it's not even about taking any of these sides. Yeah. You see, for me, 
when are we going to take our own side? That's right. <laughs> you see, when are we going to come together as black people, as original people, as Africans, who are the mothers and fathers of the Chinese, the Europeans, mm -hmm. all of them? None of them could be on this planet unless they came via the womb of the black woman and the seed of the black man. That's not our subject tonight, but you got to know this, man. you got to understand who we are in relation to who they are. There's another comment. They mm -hmm. feel very uncomfortable with the Chinese around. Yes, if the Chinese are being disrespectful to us, we must educate them. Uh, somebody made the comment. <laughs> Hold on. We must educate them. Now, if we are to remove the Chinese, then we must remove the Americans, the Belgians, the French, <laughs> and the Dutch also. First. First. That's right. I agree. I agree, but let's continue a little bit more, dear family. Thank you. Thank all of you for your. I think if I was Chinese, I'd have a little to worry about, about American aggressiveness. And we have China surrounded uh, and we're doing more all the time to try and keep it surrounded and deepen that containment of China. Uh, but China presents a fascinating case of a country that is independent doesn't have foreign bases on its territory, uh, growing very rapidly, not as rapidly now as it did for 30 years, but still uh, the second ranking economy in the world. We have an adversary, and that adversary is China, and that adversary, uh, unless there is dramatic reform inside China, will be our enemy someday. We miss, uh, I think really that needs to be dispelled was that somehow China's aiming to replace America and, and, and going to run the world. <laughs> yeah. it's not, well, first of all, the Chinese are not that stupid. The, the West, with its Christian uh, roots, are about converting other people into their beliefs. The Chinese are not about that. It's, it's just the, I'm, I, again, I'm not degrading the Western culture. I'm just pointing out the inherent nature, the DNA is of two different cultures. The Chinese, 2,000 years ago, built the Great Wall to keep the barbarians out, not to... <laughs> I hope you heard that. The Chinese, uh, uh, and he said, the Chinese 2,000 years ago built the Great Wall to keep the barbarians out, mm. not to go and invade anybody else. And understand, again, uh, you know, I saw some beautiful pictures. Remember I showed you those pictures the other day? Of the, of original. the original Chinese. Because when you see the original Chinese, they look more like us than they do these Chinese right. today. That's another story. That's another uh, show. But just to understand, dear family, how the Chinese are the ones who have a history of being attacked from the West. Okay, the Opium Wars, the Boxer Rebellions, all of these history is the West encroaching on China, not the other, the other way around. And so understand that there are many, many uh, elite, so-called elite Caucasians who are terrified of Africa or blacks ever coming to power because from their perspective, if we come to power, they think that we are just like them. We think just like them. We have the same mentality. This Chinese guy here is trying to explain the difference between the mentality of Chinese and the mentality of Europeans. And it's, everybody is different. We're all different. Believe me. And what he's saying is that we haven't got that same Cronus complex of wanting to rule over and dominate everybody else. And black people are like that too. We haven't got this idea in our, in our heads that we want to have white people as our slaves or, or Chinese. That's, that's not part of our makeup. But it doesn't stop those elite whites who are in power from fearing that, like, oh my God, we can never allow, what is it, how does it say in the scripture? Um, let us deal, come, let us deal wisely with them, mm -hmm. lest they multiply and join on to an enemy and come against us. This is their fear. This is their fear. But is, is, is their fear legitimate? I, I suggest to you, dear family, that it's not.
Did you have something you wanted to <laughs> no, contribute? No, read it after. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go further. Invade them. As the world's economic power moves rapidly to Asia, the response of the United States is to deploy the majority of its naval forces to Asia and the Pacific. This massive military buildup is known in Washington as the pivot to Asia. The target is China. The great power game in the 21st century is called perpetual war. For America's unchallenged arms industry, the annual prize is huge profits from almost $600 billion of military spending. Once an imaginary weapon on Star Wars, the electromagnetic gun is now reality. You're sitting here thinking about these next generation and futuristic ideas, and we've got scientists who have designed these, and it's coming to life. And the sm <laughs> Did you see how excited that man was about the fact that their scientists are in the laboratories coming up with new and more sophisticated weapons every day? I'm not going to say anything else for now. Let's just carry on. Because we've hardly even started this documentary, and my goodness, we can't even we can't even go a minute or two without having to just stop it and make comment because it's it's just so serious. Smartest weapons need enemies. As a Pacific nation, the United States will play a larger and long-term role in shaping this region and its future. I have directed my national security team to make our presence and mission in the Asia-Pacific a top priority. I hope you all recognize this, brother. But this is him in Australia, basically just telling the world, telling the Chinese, telling, they're going to dominate that region. Remember how they got to be in Australia in the first place, okay? This is at the this is at the demise of the Aboriginal people. See, but they haven't finished with with that. <laughs> They're saying, "Listen, we're gonna dominate this," and they put it in the mouth of a black man. And he, whilst he was the president, he carried out the agenda of white supremacy, jam up big time on another level. He never failed in that one iota. And uh, under him, as black people, we nothing changed for us. If, if, if anything, things went backwards for us. The fact that he was the CEO of white supremacy, come on, brothers and sisters, we need to put our thinking caps on today and understand what we are witnessing on our planet. In one sense... Is the U.S. already at war with China? Yes, on the ground and in the air. The winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, President Barack Obama, has committed to trillions of dollars of, uh, to our nuclear arsenal. He's committing trillions of future dollars to war and space. And we need an enemy for all this money, and China's the perfect enemy. The aim of this film is to break a silence. The United States and China may well be on a path to war, and nuclear war is no longer unthinkable. In a few years, China has become the world's second biggest economic power. The United States is the world's biggest military power, with bases and missiles and ships covering every continent, every ocean. China is a threat to this dominance, says Washington, but who is the threat? This film is about shifting power and great danger. It's also a film about the human spirit and the rise of an extraordinary resistance among people on the front line of a coming war where the words never again have an urgent meaning for all of us.
Yeah, sorry family, I said we are seven. approximately seven minutes uh, or so into that documentary. We're going to go back to it uh, shortly. Um, but before that, we're going to go into this uh, because it's important that um, each and every week uh, that we promote uh, what's going on uh, on the business side of things. Imagination promoting and advertising goods and services for the benefit of our community. Please take note of the following, dear family, and support. Support what you see and what we do. Visit www.jjsorrell.com or go to Instagram at jj underscore love sorrel. I mean, uh, you know, we, we talk about these sorrel every products week. every week, every but week. We, we're never going to get tired of telling you that you must check out jjsorrel.com. Or you can email info at jjsorrel.com or you can make a phone call. Dear brothers and sisters, have a word with JJ. Find out what's available. Beautiful cakes with that sorrel ingredient, beautiful drinks, and so much more. Call 07947 253341. That is 07947 253341. Check out JJ Love Sorrel. Visit www.naturesharproducts.co.uk and try the beard oil, specially formulated hair butters, and so much more from Nature's Hair Products. Um, Go ahead. What's up? So they stopped the stream. <laughs> Who stopped the stream? YouTube. Really? Yes, it's not on YouTube anymore. Ah. So, you think 